Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to discuss about the configuration of MDCP gateway. So in the previous lecture, I discussed about the MDCP and the MDCP configuration on the CUCN side. So in this lecture, I am going to discuss about the MDCP gateway configuration. So before starting, uh, if you are new to my channel, then please uh, subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can receive the notifications of all my upcoming videos. So let's start with the MDCP gateway configuration. <clears throat> So these are the normally eight steps which we need to do for the MDCP configuration. So the first step would be you need to configure an IP address on the Cisco IUS gateway Ethernet interface. So on the Ethernet info interface, what you need to do, you need to give an IP address. I will show you uh, how we can assign the IP address to that particular gateway interface, Ethernet interface. And then after that, the step two, that would be the assign a unique name to the Cisco IOS gateway. You need to assign a unique name that is, that will be the your host name. And that host name should be the same on the MDCP gateway configuration on CUCN. Then the step third would be to configure the IOS gateway to run MDCP as a signaling protocol. So you need to run the command like an MDCP so that your gateway will run that MDCP as a signaling protocol. Then step four would be the configure the IP address or the DNS for the CUCM server. So if you have the CUCM server IP address, then you can just use the command CCM manager config server and then the IP address, or you can use the DNS server as well if you have the FQDN as well, fully qualified domain name. Then you need to mention the codec type, whether you're using all codecs or a different type of codecs and the DTMF function, that is whether you are using out of band and in band like RTP and T or the KPML like these DTM, like the DTMF methods. So you can use the, you can, you need to use the codec type as well as the DTMF thing. Then the next step would be you need to tell the your gateway that it can communicate with the call manager server. There will be a command to uh, just to enter it on the gateway so that it can communicate with the call manager server. Then you need to bind the MDCP application to the voice ports and then you need to enable the voice ports. So let's discuss about all these steps, step one to step eight in detail, like how we can configure it on our gateway so this is our first step that would be the configure an ip address on ethernet interface and enable the interface so what you need to do you need to go to that particular interface that is in this case you can see that it is interface fast ethernet zero slash zero then you have this thing that is the next thing that is ip address you need to mention the ip address you need to give that particular IP address to this particular fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. As in this case, we just entered the command IP address 20.1.1.2.45 and then we have a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. So this is from this command, we just give the IP address on this particular Ethernet interface. Now, what we need to do, we need to enable the particular, this particular interface, and we will just do one thing. We will put the command no shut, and it will just enable this particular interface. After that, our next step would be to assign a unique name to the gateway. So you can, you can give the name of the gateway, like in this way, host name, and then GW1. GW means, GW1 means gateway one. So now when you give this gateway one name to this particular uh, gateway, it will just change the configuration to this one, gateway one config. And you need to give the same name on your CUCM as well. So the third step would be to configure voice gateway to run as an MDCP protocol. And how did you do that? You just need to put the command MDCP so that your uh, voice gateway will run an MDCP protocol. After that, you have uh, the next step that is step four. You need to configure the IP address or DNS name for CUCM server. So the first command but which you need to use that is MDCP call agent 20.1.1.1. So this is your CUCM server IP. 
then you have this command that is ccm manager config server 20.1.1.1 it should be 20.1.1.1 and then you have a command that is ccm manager config so this could be your same as your CC, uh, call manager server or it can be your tftp server so this command is mainly used ccm manager config server 20.1.1.1 just to download the configuration from the tftp server so your gateway will download the configuration from tftp server and what this command will do ccm manager config it will enable that download it will enable the download to configure the file to download the files from that tftp server then we have this uh, codec type and the dtmf relay function we need to select the codec and the dtmf relay whether we need to use out of band or in band signaling so for this we have a command that is mgcp dtmf relay codec all all codec it will use and mode would be the out of band this is using this out of band signaling is used in this uh, dtmf relay function then the next step that step six it would be to enable the support for ccm within mgcp so we have this command that is ccm manager mgcp what it will do it will enable the support for cucm then we have this thing that is a step seven that is bind mgcp application to voice ports so you have this dial peer dial peer voice one ports and you just need to put the command that is application mgcp what it will do, it will just bind that MGCP application to this particular port. We entered this port number, port one slash zero slash zero. And after that, you need to enable this particular voice port, gateway one config, voice port one slash zero slash zero, this one, and then enable this port. How to enable it? Just use this command, no shut. And once we put this command, it will just enable this particular voice port. So here you might be having a question that why are we using the dial peers here in MGCP? Because uh, MGCP is not a peer to peer. It's a master slave relationship. It's a client server protocol. So why are we using the dial peers here? So we are using, we are just creating dial peers here just for the MGCP fallback function. So let's discuss about this ports dial peer. So ports dial peer, would be between just say this is your gateway and this is your PSTN and say this is your CUCM. So here we can say that this is our CUCM gateway and the PSTN. So if you want to connect anything between gateway and PSTN, this one, we need to create port style pair between this gateway and PSTN. Like gateway is using IP and this is using PRI then we need to create a port style pair between these two and gateway and between gateway and cucm we will use the voip tile pair because both are running on voip environment that is ip environment so we will create the voip tile pair between cucm and the gateway so that's why here we are using dial pair voice when ports and why are we creating the dial peers this is just this is mainly for the mgcp fallback so if your primary server goes down it might be falling back to the secondary server but if your secondary server will also go down like there is no uh, communication between the endpoints and the call manager then what it will do this mgcp will fall back to h323 and to and for the h323 uh, for the mgcp fall back to h323 we need a dial peers because we cannot contact the cucm server because that is unavailable so to make everything work, we need to create the dial peer so that dial peer can work as an inbound as well as an outbound calls. So in case of MDCP fallback, we need to create the dial peers. If you don't need MDCP fallback, there is no need to create the dial peers, neither ports nor wipe. You don't need to create those particular dial peers. Let's move on to the commands, which we need to use it actually on the MDCP gateway. As you can see, this is a clubbing of commands. Uh, let's just discuss about one by one. Host name, gateway one, this could be the host name. It should match with the domain name on MDCP gateway page on CUCM. Then we have this command that is a normal one, MDCP. It enables the MDCP globally. Then we have this command, MDCP call agent 20.1.1.1. What it's doing? It is defining the primary call agent, that is primary CUCM server. Then we have this command, 
that is ccm manager config server 20.1.1.1 so this command is used to download the configuration from the tftp server this is this will be the ip of your tftp server it can be the same as the primary ucm one or it can be the different one as well then we have this command that is ccm manager config so what this command is doing this command is enabling that download from the tftp server so this command is downloading the file and this command is enabling the download then we have this command that is ccm manager redundant host 20.1.1.2 ccm manager that means this is your secondary call agent secondary cucm server then we have this command that is pri group time slots 1 to 24 service mdcp what it's doing it is just defining that it is a t1 controller on that the pri ports will be serviced by this particular mgcp then we have this command that is interface serial 1 slash 023 now ip address that means under this channel it is binding l3 that is q9312 call manager then we have additional uh, cisco ios commands uh, like on your on the gateway how you can check it so if you want to just configure the fallback then you can use the command ccm manager fallback mdcp it, it is just enabling the fallback from mdcp to sc 3 mode if no call manager is available you can use the command ccm manager config it enables the download ccm manager config mdcp download configuration you can use ccm manager switchback redundant host music on hold mdcp anything you can use and what this switchback means switchback switchback means configure the switchback options to the higher order call manager then we have this command as well mdcp bind control mdcp bind media it binds the mdcp control package it binds only the media packets so that depends what all are the configuration you need to do then we have this thing the just a uh, screenshot of that particular domain name which you need to choose the same one it must match with host name and ip domain name on the ios mgcp gateway so here like in our previous slides we use the host name as gateway one so this gateway one should be here as well in the domain name field then we have this thing module in slot zero once you choose this module after that you will be getting an option of subunit and then you can uh, configure the interface now we have these uh, important commands as well to check these things like show ccm manager config download show ccm manager fallback mdcp whether something is configured or not show ccm manager backhole whether it is showing or not show ccm manager redundancy music on hold everything so you can use these commands and you can use these additional commands as well show mdcp endpoints show mdcp stats as well so in the endpoints it will display all the endpoints which are eligible for mdcp management and in the stats it will uh, give you the information about the mdcp stats and then we have this thing that is isdn status like how we can check the isdn status you just need to put this command that is show isdn status so once you put this command it will show you layer one status layer two status and the layer three status and before that it will show the switch isdn switch type as well like which type they are using so if there is any issue with the uh, hardware not the hardware i can say the ethernet uh, like if the cable is damaged if the cable is not plugged in correctly then it will show you that layer one status as inactive if everything is good then it will show the layer one status as active so once the layer one status shows active we need to check the layer two so in the layer two state should show multiple frame established that means everything is working correctly if it is showing tei unassigned or any other error then there might be an issue uh, from the service provider side from your side like the uh, switch type is different network log is different so it can be anything so layer two status should show multiple frame established if it is showing multiple frame established then you need to go to the layer three status and layer three status will show you the active calls which are that which are active at that particular time it will show all the like if there are five calls then it will show five active layer three calls then we have the debug commands you can use it like uh, you can use the debug mgcp debug mdcp events debug mdcp packets
debug mdcp media errors anything you can use these commands and then for the ccm manager we have debug ccm manager backhaul debug ccm manager events music on hold so you can use any of these commands for the debugs then we have this question that is uh, mdcp question so in this as you can see it is saying configure r1 that is router 1 as mdcp gateway for ucm and if the primary goes down make sure all endpoints on the mdcp gateway re-register it to the backup one and also ensure ip phones can send or receive calls to and from pst so this is our primary cucm this is our secondary one so if our primary cucm goes down make sure all endpoints here we can say one endpoint that is 2001 should register re-register on this mdcp get uh, backup cucm server and it should be able to receive or send calls to and from pstn this one so in this uh candidates problem statement it is saying i verified that mdcp gateway worked i even tested all inbound and outbound calls but he did not receive the point so this is your uh this is mainly the ccie lab question that's why it is written over here like why i did not receive the points so let's discuss about this one so maybe you can you can think about it as well like from these commands you can check whether it is working and how is it working and what all are the config commands you need to choose as you can see what we need to do we need to check this thing so as we know our uh, call should go via the backup cucm that is secondary one but as just we checked show ccm manager it is showing primary as registered 20.1.1.1 first backup or second backup is not showing registered that is none so even though the calls are working but calls are working through primary cucm not the secondary one and what was our question that it should work through secondary cucm if the once primary goes down so he forgot to add that command that is ccm manager redundant host 20.1.1.2 that's why he did not get the point so he missed this particular command so these all are the configuration and this one was the uh, proper scenario of one uh, one troubleshooting issue i hope you really enjoyed this video i i hope you learned something from this video and if you really like it please like share and subscribe it and please press the bell icon so that you will be able to receive notifications of all my upcoming videos thank you